We're on top of the mesas here in Grand Junction. It feels like I'm on the edge of the earth. Like, it is so high up. I felt like I was on my way to the Met Gala. I was just like, oh, this is it. Baby, call Billy Porter, we can come as a team. We had to have a big boom at the end. The Golden Girls have arrived. And yun -ta -na -na, the grand finale. We've had so many looks this season that have been amazing and memorable and beautiful, but I think I've felt my most glamorous in Grand Junction. This was the first time that all three designers decided, you know what, let's give the girls a fun, cohesive look, and they all went and shopped for the gold fabrics together. All of the three looks are made from the same fabric. So it has a very cohesive feel to it, but three unique designs. Now for my gold design, I wanted big, grand, fabulous hair. And then we put a nice jewel piece right here to really just pop. Then the look was a cocktail dress, because I knew the other girls were going to have something that was long into the floor. They had these beautiful sleeves. As the short diva, I like to have on a nice platform shoe, so, you know, I feel elevated too with the girls, honey. I'm walking tall with the dolls. But walking on those cliffs, I was like, somebody hold me. No, I didn't want to be the scarlet of the group. I didn't want to take a tumble, okay? Your mama needs a selfie. You know, when I was meeting with my designer, the hair team, I really just wanted to trust them on it and not give them too much direction. We wanted to just go like very monochromatic golds. We did this full on like Fubon. Wigs and Grace made me the only detailed updo. We really wanted to do a different silhouette, like a sportswear pants moment, you know, with the skinny little heel. And I really kind of just felt like a big, nice Christmas tree topper. Then Shangela, she wants to crack these jokes. I was like, girl, you know, I'm just giving you a big old Christmas tree topper. And she's like, bitch, maybe Christmas tree bottomer. <laughs> I was like, you don't know me. Okay, she might, she might know me a little bit. This is the biggest dress I have ever worn, ever. I'm wearing this like huge, massive golden gown that's up to, my heels are no less than eight inches, which is a really big heel, just so we're clear. Here's a little fun fact. I'm actually wearing pants underneath the gown because I like keep having to step into it and out of it because I can't move around that much in it. I can't get in cars, I can't sit down. I can only stand up and walk on completely flat surfaces. The dress is so big, it can't stay in the workroom. So it is just on the bed in my hotel room and I sleep on the floor. No, I'm kidding. There's, there's, there's more than one bed. She really has decided she's the queen of this episode. Now this is Angie, Shanji's daughter, okay? For my drag daughter's performance here, she deserves to feel beautiful. But also I want to give her something that's in her element that she loves, which is punk rock. Diego and his team has created this cover-up skirt for her. So in the beginning of the number, it's a ballad. You think, oh, she's in a gown. But then it comes off and bam, she's in a sickening motocross-inspired bodysuit because she rides motorbikes. <laughs> we wanted to make it sexy and gorgeous because we want her to feel glamorous and beautiful, but we also want her to feel like a badass. And that's what the hair in this look, that's what the costume, that's what the makeup, all the elements are going to deliver. And I'm working with Dustin Van Dyke, who's part of the Van Dyke family here in the Grand Valley. It's a legendary drag family for about 20 years here in this area. So Dustin Van Dyke really loves my chemical romance, and this look is specifically inspired by the album Black Parade. We're going for this femboy drag. Embracing yes. what's inside, exactly. bringing it outside. Exactly. Yes. In this look with my chemical romance, they take the ropes and the epaulets and they kind of turn them into like the structure of like skeletons, which is really cool. But my look, it's like this drum major. It's inspired by Pippa, who is a character from Black Parade. What's really exciting about this episode is that we're also adorning Dustin's chair as well. But with this new motorized chair, he gets a lot of freedom, so we're showing how it has liberated him. So we're gonna put this nice cape over his chair and then turn the chair into a throne to amplify his regalness. Oh! <laughs> Gender non-conforming is my sweet spot. And Taylor's so strong, being so young. He's an amazing trans man, advocate for the community. I was so lucky to incorporate one of Taylor's favorite things, which is Rocky Horror Picture Show, which is where we pulled in these colors of like red and black and silver, and then also the gender non-conforming. So something that Taylor was really adamant about was this term future neutral when it came to gender. It was really just like an F you to social norms and to gender norms. I feel like I can ruin people's lives. Yeah! <laughs>
And we wanted to do like all these gender elements where it was like muscle elements, but also hyper feminine. And then it tears away to do the opposites and so on and so forth to really create this element that like there is no gender, right? We just want to express ourselves and love. And Taylor was so rich in that.